Hey friends, it's Shan here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This video I'm going to play the Centennial Park Golf Course in Mississauga, Toronto. It's the closest one to me that had an open tea time for today. It is a Tuesday afternoon and we're trying to get out for 4 p.m. Hopefully we'll finish 18 before sunset, but I'll let you know. This might also be my last round of golf with my current set A of golf clubs because my new clubs are coming in the mail and I'm super excited for that. Let's head out to the golf course! The Centennial Park Golf Center has three nine-hole courses, north, west, and east. In this video, I'm going to be playing north and east course. In a previous video, I played the west course, so go check that out after. Let's start off with hole number one, which is a regulation par four. This is what I would consider the only regulation par four on this course. The others are considerably shorter. This hole is a dogleg right. It looks pretty open, but I will say the roughs on this course tend to eat up golf balls. I don't know what it is, but balls go into the rough and then it's very hard to find them. Hole number two is the first of a string of par threes. I also noticed that the white and blue tees tend to be combined into one, so usually the actual distance is somewhere in between those two marked on the scorecard. I've also been having this problem where I would push and hook a lot of my shots. Bear with me, you'll see that a lot on the course where I don't hit par threes in regulation and have to chip again. I think partially this is because I didn't golf consistently and also because my iron shafts are in general too flexible for me, which causes that shot to happen more often. Hole number three is a shorter par three. As you can see, the white and blue tee box is combined again. I was having trouble with the tee here, so I decided to not use one. There is water, there's a little pond on the left side of the green, so try not to go left, which was my problem today. But on this hole, I just stayed short of the green. Hole number four is a longer par three. Now you see what I mean when I say this is a good course to practice your range of irons. It is also the summer, so there's a summer camp going on and screaming kids all over the place. I will try to keep the background noise in this video low so you guys don't have to hear it like we did. This hole is very straightforward. The nets on the outside means outside of that is just the roads and no longer the golf course. Comment down below what you would do here. This is kind of a flat fairway shot. I am going to chip it, but I do know some people that would putt from this location and probably end up with a better result than I did here. That felt good. Hole number five is a short par four. It's 260, 270 total. Dog leg right, the green is just tucked behind the trees on the right side. I will say even from the back tees, if you do drive more than 250, I would say don't hit driver because you might go out of bounds. For me, I am safe here to hit driver and I hit a good one here. So let's watch that in slow motion. This was the beginning of my luck today with bad bounces. This one landed on the green and then decided to bounce his way off to the side. Break. That's annoying. 
Hole number six is a baby par three. It is surrounded by trees, but the green is right in front of you, so aim straight. I should mention at this point that a lot of the par three greens here are mound shaped, so if you do land slightly to the side of the green, it will bounce off to the side. First round back, we're chipping again. I'm gonna use my 60 because there's like no green to work with. I've also been hitting a lot of my chips left of where I want it to be, so basically everything was just going left today. You'll see that as a trend. Hey. Hole number 7, giving myself a little pep talk. You'll see the bunker on the front right side of the green. The surrounding is just rough. Again, very straightforward hole, a good practice for your kind of mid irons. Unless you hit it fat like me. Oh, nice Hole number eight is another par three. It's about 130, pretty straightforward. There is hazard on the right side, bunker around the green, but the green is fairly open. Again, I hit this left and had to chip it back. Okay, I had a good baby flop here with my 60 degrees, so let's watch that again in slow motion. Hole number 9, last hole on the north course. This is a very short par 4. I thought I'd press play here, but I didn't. Apologies for that. The hole does turn to the right, and I believe I hit a 5 iron or hybrid here because it's a very short hole and I didn't want to go out of bounds left. Let's head over to the east course. Again, I did make a previous video on the west course, so go check that out. Let's start with hole number one on the east course, which is a par four. It's very straightforward. There's bunkers on the left side. Other than that, again, stay away from the roughs because somehow they just eat up golf balls. I had a little chip here, but I left it chunky, so, you know, sometimes this happens in golf. Hole number two is a slightly longer par three. If you have a rangefinder, I would suggest using it because here it said it was around 165 yards, which I think is accurate instead of 180. That's why I used a five iron here. I was between clubs between my five iron and hybrid, but there's nothing in front of the green and there's out of bounds behind the green. So decided to use a shorter club, although I do have to work on putting from the fairway. As you guys saw earlier, I think I'm better off chipping either way. Hole number three, you guessed it, another par three. This one I believe is true to yardage, so play it as whatever is marked on the scorecard. There is a giant bunker on the left side of the green, which you see. I would say in general for all of these par threes, it's safe to go short of the green because it's just flat fairway. Behind the green is rough and it's just harder to get out of. Again, I hit this chip left. I wonder if it's because I tend to aim with an open club face and then I hit it straight, 
what do you guys think if you have any tips or advice for me feel free to leave them in the comments i'm still learning and growing as a golfer hole number four is a fun little par four there is a giant pond running all down the right side of the fairway, so don't go in there. But the green is actually on the other side of the pond. So for your first shot, you gotta aim straight down the fairway. I pulled my shot a little, so I ended up on a hill in the rough. But for the next shot, as you'll see in a second, you do have to hit over the pond onto the green that is surrounded by bunkers. So this is one of the prettier holes on this golf course. I thought this ball was going to break more towards the water like the last hole, but it did not. Hole number 5 is a long par 3. As you can see, the white and blues are together in the back, so this hole is actually playing about 180. I decided to take my hybrid, and then I pulled it and hooked to the left, because that's what I've been doing all day. <laughs> oh, but it gets better. Wait till you see this chip. Yeah, not really sure what happened there, but it tends to happen to all of us on the golf course, whether we admit it or not. Although the good thing is, this next chip was much better. I left it about half a feet from the hole. Okay. We're done here. Hole number 6, par 3. I could have hit my hybrid here, but I decided to go with my 5-iron. Little did I know that I was going to hit it left and pull it so it didn't go the full distance and it ended up in the rough <laughs> next to the green. Uh, the struggle continues. Thank you guys for watching. If you're enjoying this video, hit that like button because I had a lot of fun but it was a rough time out there. Hole number seven, we're almost done. Also playing at sunset, the sunlight does kind of hit very direct from different sides because the sun's not directly over your head anymore. Moving on. The right side is all out of bounds. It's hazards. Don't really try to find your balls in there. There might be other animals. It's just not a good time. So keep it straight and hopefully onto the green. Hole number 8, another par 3. This tee deck is a good example of why I think you should get a rangefinder for this golf course just because the white blue tees are together and they can be anywhere along this 20 yard stretch of tee deck. So the actual yardage for the hole is somewhere between what it says on the scorecard. Of course, didn't really matter to me because I push hooked it to the left again. Turns out it's really important to hit greens in regulation if you want to make birdies or pars, or become a god at putting, which I have not achieved yet, but we're working on it. Last hole on the east course is a par 4, around 300 yards. I decided to go for an iron here because I wasn't sure where to aim for a driver, and I didn't really need that distance for a short par 4. On this hole, you should aim for the left side of the fairway. If you go right, you will see right here, you'll have a blind shot into the green over a bunker. Whereas if you're on the left side of the fairway, you can see the green very clearly and it would be just a much easier approach shot. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As you saw, I was struggling with the push hook 
shot on a lot of my approach shots, so namely all of my irons and my hybrid. That is something that I've struggled with for a long time, and then when I don't play golf consistently, that kind of shot comes back. So I want to be transparent with you guys and show you that nobody's perfect, and I am just, you know, another amateur golfer who's golfed for a while. You know, golf is one of those games where you have good days, you have bad days, but all in all, I had a lot of fun today. Centennial Park Golf Course is a great golf course for beginners and for people who are getting into the game or like me who will be receiving new golf clubs soon to test out new golf clubs. The reason I say that is because the course is very open and a lot of par 3s and short par 4s. So it gives you the opportunity to work on your iron shots, the different par 3s of different lengths, gets you through most of your shorter to mid irons, and then the longer par 4s you can work on your longer clubs. For two people on a weekday, today is a Tuesday, it costs us just over $80 Canadian. So I think this is a great affordable option for golf close to the city. Of course, this golf course is not regulation, which means it's not a par 72. It's mostly par 3s and short par 4s, but still a great opportunity to get out there, swing the golf club, and you know, just get some golf course experience. With that being said, thanks again for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!